Hello, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing a reading on Ed, Ed and Eddie, last episode. So please make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And leave a comment down below on what you think of the video. And also if you have any suggestions, let me know. I'll give you a shout out in the next video. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. As you may know, the popular show Ed, Ed and Eddie has been running for a long time. However, between October 7, 2003 and October 21st, 2003, episode 34 was accidentally released one week before it was scheduled to. It was also known to some around the office that the primary writer had been sick with the flu. And instead of going on to making episode 34, the show was supposed to replay episode 1 at 5 a.m. Eastern. People reported a very disturbing new episode premiering on Cartoon Network. Some children were unfortunate enough to see it. Apparently the quality of the episode was mediocre when held to regular standards. Animation was choppy. Sound was constricted and very muffled. Reports of a line running up and down similar to a crappy VHS table received. Scenery was described as overwhelmingly dark and depressing without changing props and other background objects. Stormy looking. Characters also behaved oddly. Instead of the normal goofy hijinks inspired personalities, viewers complained that they seemed extremely agitated, gratuitously hateful towards each other, and constantly about to begin sobbing after the lines. The protagonist also had a very bad lisp. No one knows why, but he spoke with a sexual tone that further bothered the viewers. I was one of these viewers. The episode began with Eddie walking down the street with Ed. I noticed that Ed was missing. There was an angular shot coming from in front of the two of them, showing them walking towards the viewer. He, Eddie, was wearing the angry look he does when something goes wrong. His eyes were red around the iris. Ed looked absolutely forlorn and practically dragged behind Eddie, tears in his eyes, which were both lazy and looking opposite outward directions. Kevin, the serious antagonist, was riding his bike opposite of the Eds, towards them. The shot became blurry and low moans were heard coming from Eddie before Kevin hit him, which never happened because the screen went to black. The screen then snapped back and Kevin was again heading towards Eddie. The view was so blurry this time, all I saw was a green blob heading towards a yellow one. Again, the low moan, only this time it sounded like the microphone was broken and a loud static came, greatly overshadowing the moan. A claymation sequence of Double D sleeping in Eddie's bed came up. Honestly, it may have just been the abruptness, but I jumped and shivered. Waking up and getting out of bed, he moved only around the circular room. The fast pitter-patter of footsteps being the only audio. The steps, the step sounds were very clear as I was shown a bird's eye view of his, of him scampering around the room. There were no visible doors. Ed began screeching, sounding like a fish or cat, as he moved wildly around the cell of a room faster and faster until the screen began blurring again. The purple room's color swallowing a now orange blur. An extreme close-up of Eddie's front door sat in absolute silence for a mad maddeningly long time. At least two minutes of dead silence and a door. Next we see Jimmy and Sarah at a doctor of some sort, probably oral. Jimmy, obstructed in view by a hanging lamp, is crying loudly with Sarah, trying to comfort him in an unusual, an unusually warm fashion. It hurts, Sarah. It hurts, Jimmy said. Suddenly, the door of the room is smashed open by a new character, a dentist. His face wasn't shown because he was tall enough to be out of the shot. Sarah was escorted out of the room. Jimmy was shown. Then Jimmy was shown. His headgear was mangled. The front bent upward, stretching his lip very high, tearing portions. The front of his gums were trickling blood, and teeth were missing. 
The disturbing part was he had lost both of his arms and legs beforehand apparently and sat a paraplegic. I almost cried as I came to the conclusion that the others had beat him up and bent his headgear. The camera stayed on his mangled face for a few seconds. Still a picture. Still as a picture. And silent as ever. Then the commercials came on. We were instantly assaulted with a very hairy wall, Ralph in his darkened shed fisting the cow repeatedly. The visual loops and gets blurry again as the scene pans out. Naze is reading a magazine on her couch. The quality is now perfect. Eddie is now gone without Ed. The quality de declines worse than before as he is still walking. The sun now lighting the mood somewhat as he smiles and begins to run. The door is shown again and we see through Eddie's eyes as he reaches out and opens it. His house is nice and bright, but a very badly played violin is blaring. The only audio in the scene as he makes his way through the house. Eddie opened the door to his room. Johnny is shown under Nay's couch cushion as he crawls out on all fours in a comedic way and props up behind her, still oblivious. I laughed because someone forgot to draw his eyes and I thought of a mold. Suddenly, I stopped laughing as he started to swallow her head. Still in a cartoonist fashion, of course, but this was much different. He was still, he and she stayed like this until she started kicking and struggling. Johnny held her like this until she went limp. A zoom in on his face revealed extremely small human eyes. Double D was laying on Eddie's floor, no longer in claymation. The camera zoomed, the camera showed Eddie's house from the remainder of the episode, about three minutes. And then the next program began on the spot.